Hi, this is Gail from Life in Splatters, and in case you don't know her work, I'm very surprised that you don't recognize it. This is Winterstrom Art. Uh, her name is Jessica, and she does some of the most beautiful paintings that I think I've ever seen. Very ethereal, uh, beautifully composed, her use of movement and color using all the different layers of paint. How she manipulates the paint and then uses a spinner most of the time to stretch the layers of paint out and create some of the most magnificent pieces I've ever seen. I first noticed her work on Instagram. She has some magnificent pieces there, so do go take a look. But the wonderful thing is she's decided to show us how to do what she does. And I think you should take a look at her channel and see if some of her techniques ring with you and try them yourself. Now this next painting, she's going to talk us through parts of it, and I really am impressed with the amount of information that she offers in her videos. So take a listen. It's 16 by 20 inches. So I will use a fair amount of paint and you will realize in the end, and I will point it out to you, why in this one I used way too much overall. I used too much pillow paint. I used too much paint on top of it, but let's get into that later. I will use two of my favorite colors, Matisse Southern Ocean Blue and Golden Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Two wonderful colors and the reason why I'm sure they will work together is fairly easy. So let's dive into color theory just for a second. Blue and yellow mixed to a green. But it always depends on the kind of blue and yellow you are using. It's like math. So with this example, the blue is on the green side, which means it probably has yellow in it. Otherwise it wouldn't be greenish. If my blue was more on the red side, then chances are pretty high that this reddish blue mixed with yellow will turn muddy. Since I have a greenish blue, and I know you need a yellow to make it turn green, it will stay vibrant. So in a nutshell, you have to figure out what colors are in your colors. Sometimes you can see it. We might need a little practice, but you will see if they are leaning towards red or yellow or blue. And if you have a blue that, that leans towards green, you will have a blue and a yellow. If you mix that with red, you're mixing those three colors and not only blue and red because they always have a tint to them unless you use primary colors but who does that i hope this all made sense to you if not shoot me a question Alrighty, so let's get back to the painting this is my nickel laser gold the first color i put on was black then my southern ocean blue on top of that i used Indigo Waves by this little piggy and Interference Gold by Golden. Again, the other blue, the Indigo Waves I used, has a gold to it, so it also is leaning more towards green.
these are my cell activators this one is deep gold by golden mixed with australian flow troll one to one and a half and the other one is amsterdam oxide black mixed with australian flow troll one to one when i load up my palette knife i try to spread it out a lot because i really just want a really thin layer of my cell activator there's two different ways the first one i show you here is pour it on and then tilt my tool so it will spread out the other one i think i will do that later is i just spread it out right away with another tool i really just want a thin layer here i use some boom gel in black on top of the cell activator and i try to spread that out as much as it's possible because boom gel's consistency is fairly thick way thicker than my other colors so by spreading it out a little it makes it easier to spread it out with the swipe later on top of that i just added my other colors the southern ocean blue the interference gold and the nickel azo gold and then i will just swipe while i'm swiping i'm realizing how much paint is on the canvas i was very generous with the pillow paint and also very generous with the blue so let me explain why that is not necessarily a good thing if you're familiar with this technique you know that i work with three different consistencies the thickest is the pillow that's the white one that i put on top that is just my carrier my slider that will move with tilting and spinning and the composition on top will expand the second layer are my paints mixed with my pouring medium. On top of that, there will be, in this case, I put it on my palette knife, there will be the cell activator, which is the thinnest layer. So what happens in a nutshell with this technique is the thin layer has almost no surface tension and it can really easily sink through all the other layers and that is what creates those cells there's different factors that you have to be aware not only the amount also the consistency but i want to focus on the amount today so if your cell activator has a thick layer of paint underneath that it can sink through it won't be able to hold its shape very well. To see how she finished this painting, you'll have to go over to her channel and there will be a link in the description box and you can click this little link up above and go see her complete video, which gives you much more information. Please check out her YouTube channel and you will also find her on Instagram as Winterstrom Art. It's well worth looking. Her pieces are really quite beautiful and her technique is unique. Um, again, thanks for coming along this journey. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen here today that you'll go to her channel and like and subscribe. And thanks again coming along let's keep playing with pigments and making beautiful things take care bye